Hey Zombie Slayers, Jonathan here at Night Knowledge. Uh, we are playing a new match of State of Decay 2. We're, you, we're doing the new uh, Lethal Zone difficulty. We are going to pick a random map and uh, we're going to see what this is all about. This is only going to be single player. I'm hoping in the future that we will have some uh, multiplayer because um, even on Nightmare before the update 23, uh, Nightmare was pretty crazy. I didn't like doing anything really in Nightmare. I would be, just be cursing a lot in the game. So um, we're on lethal mode right now. Uh, I'm just pick instead of filling it out with uh, a legacy characters, possibly with with loot and everything uh, pre pre set up. I'm just going to use random people. Uh, we have. Let's just take a look. I just, I just want to make sure that we have okay stats. And um, but like I was saying, I really hope in the future that my friends will be online. I hope you you guys will be online. Uh, leave your gamer tag in the comments below so that I can add you to my Xbox Microsoft friends list and uh, so that we can play together because uh, Nightmare is very challenging, but lethal. Lethal difficulty? I have no idea how hard it's going to be. So, um, so I want some help. So let's grab some uh, the right of the initial once. rucksacks and uh, give it to the characters. The right we used to be able to do it from just talking to them, but now we have to actually open up this uh, UI and toss it this way, which I don't really like. I, I like being able to give uh, rucksacks right off the bat. So... The ability to look into your party members' inventory was from the last update, update 22. Okay, so one of the big things about the the lethal zone is that now many areas are, are already looted. So that's going to make it much harder for us. Now I want to check out the area but as you can see there's already like a huge uh, group of zombies over there with with uh, the armored zombies so I don't want to get stuck up on the uh, billboard scouting and um, get trapped so that's another thing we're gonna find way more zombies there's gonna be way more plague plague hearts let, let me read from the list uh, so we're gonna be taking a uh, hundred percent more damage and infection gained uh, basically 40% more than nightmare mode uh, the, when you actually contract the blood plague it's going to kill you in five minutes instead of the 10 minutes that it would in nightmare uh, Zeds can cause twice as many injuries uh, so that means our, our uh, stamina and our health bar is going to be severely capped and this will be really bad at the beginning of the game because we need to be at peak performance and there's going to be too many zombies and all the bad things. So dodging is going to cost more stamina. Uh, there'll be less vehicles in the game and the vehicles we do find will, will always be severely damaged and it'll have no gas. All freaks, uh, we're talking about the bloaters, the screamers, the ferals and the juggernauts they're all the blood plague freak version like you may have seen in the heartland videos hordes are going to be able to contain one of each freak which is going to be really scary gun noise is going to be increased and uh, zombies are going to chase for much longer instead of i believe a minute they'll chase they'll chase you for up to five minutes now and like I said, there's way more plague hearts. I believe from what I read in the the patch notes, like three times as many plague hearts. And they're going to have much more damage resistance. And when you destroy a plague heart, they don't kill the nearby plague zeds either. So you're going to have to fight those plague zeds or like I time it correctly. And as I said, uh, most houses are going to come preluded. And... There's going to be morale penalties, experience gain penalties, and standing gain penalties. So everything's much harder in that respect. Survivors eat more. They're going to eat two food each. So I don't believe... 
I've, I've read people's comments in my other videos and people like uh, um, Lichenology, which gives plus two food. That's not really going to work, I feel, in this difficulty. I'm going to run really quickly. Just enough time. Something special about these new blood screamers is that they can actually shoot a projectile at our survivors now. So that's going to be bad. I'm trying to avoid making as much noise as possible because I don't want to attract any zombies. And there is that uh, plague bloater, which is right around the fence. And that's such a mistake. That's why I always prefer to play with humans instead, because humans hopefully won't make that mistake. So we're talking about morale, XP, and standing game penalties. It's gonna to craft anything. It's gonna cost more. It's gonna cost more to repair, and vehicle fuel efficiency is also lowered in this lethal zone difficulty. So let's try to find that last zombie, or actually let's let's search the last zones. There's, as you notice, there are a ton more uh, Zeds now. So let's skip ahead, because uh, I have to find this one zombie that's hiding. Okay, so we found the last zombie. We have turned this into our first base. Let's drop off some of our loot. We got some gas, we got a small backpack, but we want our backpack as big as possible. And I'm going to take this time to actually change the clothes for our guys. So we'll do the Juggernaut mask for that guy. For Jada, we're going to give her we're going to make her a pirate. So we got the tricorn hat and the pirate vet, pirate jacket. And lastly, for this character, we will equip him with the tactical winter camo and the matching boonie. So let's skip to these characters now and deposit the rucksacks. There's one. And if you look at this character, he already has like 30% blood plague and but but more importantly he's been injured uh i guess when he jumped over the fence and in, into the blood bloater he has lost half of his stamina bar and he's half dead so i'm gonna switch back to brian lovely lovely uh back so what i'm actually going to do right now is i'm going to find the option to hide the backpack right here under video backpacks so now we can see the nice uh, jacket back that's the juggernaut jacket and i believe you would only get that if you logged in during the uh i guess how the, the halloween time okay so there are there's a blood screamer so let's go in the opposite direction and this is actually very unwise i should in this difficulty, you should always have, I feel you should always have someone with you, even if it's your own guys. And as I said in my pr previous videos, I don't like bringing my own survivors with me. I would prefer to bring uh, the Enclave allies with me because if they die, that's okay. But if my own survivors die, that, that, that's a bad thing. And I'm looking behind my, myself, there's a blood uh, bloater. Let's keep looting. I'm not doing quick looting because we make more noise and that's going to attract more, more Zeds. So you know what, actually, I heard my character say that uh, I can harvest the bloaters. So that was something you can do in the Heartland gameplay. I'm not too sure if we can do it in this. And you can't. <laughs> oh, jeez. So obviously, 
at least right now, you can't s st uh, sneak up on blood bloaters that are lying on the ground and like harvest something from them. Maybe, maybe that was something from Heartland. So learn from my mistake. And as you can see, the worst thing about that is that not only have I taken uh, plague infection now, but I've also myself lost half of my stamina bar. And that's really going to make things difficult. I won't be able to fight as much. I won't be able to run as much. And uh, I believe in this new uh, lethal zone, we want to be able to run a lot. I, I'll, I'll probably actually want marathon or the marathon specialization because I think we'll be running much more frequently. I'm just checking to see whether there's anything that I can call. I don't really want to use my prestige on anything right now. So let's take a look. Okay, so let's do this quest right here. And as you notice, this is only day one, and there are tons of screamers, tons of, or a, a few bloaters, and lots of zombies. And it's much more difficult, a much more difficult day one. So I believe this will have the materials rucksack that we need. Yep. And let's head back quickly. As you can see, I can like sprint for five seconds and then run out of stamina. Okay, and there's there's my other guy who's who's hurting from the blood plague. We'll drop off the materials. Either a workshop or an infirmary would be a good place to start. And you know what I forgot to do? The first thing you should do when you get your first home is you should be clearing the trash and you should clear the master bedroom. So we're going to make an infirmary because I want a way to be able to heal my characters. Okay, so that's complete. I love the way that it, it indicates that there's a new mission. That's that's how it shows you at the top of the screen. That's that's really cool. I I like the look, the artistic look of that. Okay, so we're gonna head to this new enclave if we can make it. But there's a screamer, and quite a lot of Zeds around. Let's uh, sneak. And see, I would normally never sneak during during day one, but there are so many zombies and the difficulty is so high. Oh, and if you look, there's another screamer. So, and they're too close together. Like probably while I try to kill that first screamer, the second screamer is gonna stun me. Not to mention it's gonna call more, more Zeds. So I'm actually just gonna run past and my guy's hitting him. And, and, and if you, Paid close attention, one of the screamers did a projectile vomit. Watch the feral. So priority right now besides getting Oh, and there's a feral. And I don't have enough stamina. This is the worst. Let's see what's behind me. It's right there! <laughs> that was close. And that's why you always carry snacks too. Stranger. Oh, it's coming. It's coming. Here's the enclave. Damn, it's locked. And this is crazy. Oh, just in time. And run inside. Okay, so we got kind of like soldier looking, a soldier looking enclave, which is great. Oh. And we we'll use this opportunity to try to kill the feral and kill the extra zombies. Look at that feral. What's special about that feral that I feel that's different than, say, Heartland? I, I don't remember those blood ferals having a, a thick a thick head. If you saw my update video, you have to like crack its head with with not one but a few a few headshots to be able to then kill it afterwards with an actual normal headshot. Okay, so we got some more rucksacks. 
we got a generator. We got a repair kit and a Molotov. We got another rucksack, which is great. Let's hand this over to Jada, our pirate, right here. Okay, there we go. And let's grab that other rucksack. And I believe we'll head home now. Because the rucksack already gives gives us too much weight. Maybe we'll drop by that military installation on the way home, hope, hope, hoping that there's a gun there. Except for those washrooms at the very beginning of the game. I feel like there is, at least right now, enough or not that many pre-looted locations. Knock on wood. Maybe they do that for the beginning days. It'd be Imagine how hard it'd be if like 60% of the places you, you visit it, it on day one through five has nothing in it. So we got some pills. Once again, I don't want to cause too much noise because you never know. If, like, I can't kill a feral in, in this state. I can barely kill more than one. I, I can't even kill the bloaters because I have nothing to shoot. Oh, and here we go. We got a pistol, so I'll equip that. And let's uh, rearrange some of, huh? some of the stuff. Let's give you heavy stuff. Okay. So we got another ammo rucksack, which is good, I guess. We got some bolts. Can't really use that yet. And let's try to head back. Reload. So we're gonna have to kill those two screamers, but now we can actually kill them without as much difficulty. That's a bad miss. And as you saw, there's a projectile vomit that it did. I don't want to find out what that does. Now I ran out of uh, stamina. This is really bad. No stamina, low, like a quarter health. Have the Molotov. It's kind of dangerous throwing it at that at own survivor, but you got to do what you got to do to to get away. And we got some armored Zeds coming. Let's just get these rucksacks and materials home, and then we'll go do some more. What's it called? We'll do some more scavenging. Which reminds me I should build something for the base. Let's just get that other rucksack. Yes. So once again, let me know in the comments below what is your gamer tag because I don't intend on playing lethal zone dif difficulty by myself it's it's it, th this is very stressful uh solo let's put our stuff away the bolts away the amp the extra ammo and the pills and i don't have any stamina stuff oh wait we do have those energy drinks so i'll take one energy drink in the in like an emergency We'll use it. Okay, so there's a horde bottom left. There's the house that we originally looted. We could go east, I guess you can say, to get more materials. But I want to head down there. Quite a few guys. So actually, let's take a look at the storage container zone. And see what type of loot there is. Okay. Okay, so that's some pesticide, I believe. Yeah, pesticide. So if we had a farm, we could equip well, that and get a boost in our meds production. So as you saw, this is one of those cases where there's very few 
looting opportunities due to the lethal zone difficulty. We got a page, we got some parts. Okay, so there was a horde over the, over on uh, on the street. So let's see if we can go behind. I'm more paranoid about the freaks. Let's see. So there's the horde. They they walked away. We can open this. Perfect. Let's like loot. This. Always looking outside. That's okay, no heavy. rucksack. That's grid. Once again, the experience gain is much slower in this difficulty mode. So I believe by now I would have possibly been able to prestige my uh, wits, I believe, but I don't even know if we gained two stars yet for this character. There, there, two stars. Okay. So let's see, can't do anything here. Can't, can't craft anything. So I think having starting characters with community skills is very important. And I actually might use this right away. I've never in all of my gameplay, and we're talking maybe 200 plus hours of State of Decay. I've never used that option to uh, lower someone's infection. I've never done it, but I'm going to actually have to use it for, for this gameplay. So these doors are locked and I really don't want to bash it and cause noise. So I'm being very paranoid and just looking around, making sure nothing spawns. Because that's the one thing about State of the Cape that I don't like is that the game spawns zombies just poof out of thin air. I don't like games or zombie games like that. I want to know that maybe there's a huge horde, like a huge, like, you know, like in, in The Walking Dead. You remember in one of the latest... Uh, seasons there was just a valley just full of them and there's no way any amount of guns would be able to take out that many zombies even if you had like a tank you you're not gonna be able to run over that many zombies it is, is impossible so I would want there to be this maybe zombies in the middle of the map or a part of the map and they can and they have really good hearing so when you actually cause noise it pulls some of these zombies from a from an, an enormous unkillable horde towards your direction but not just like outside your periphery I, I I never found that that was very what's it called immersive I I actually found I, I find that actually breaks immersion with zombies just whoa just just spawning just mm -hmm. close by. So let's see, let's take your stuff and we're gonna drop it off. And actually if you look at if you look at Jada, she has she almost has blood plague. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna take take the other guy out of the infirmary. And he's actually lost a little bit, which is good. And we have to put Jada back in there, but I'm gonna struggle a little bit here. Because I I need to use Brian still. And the other guy, but but we got to get rid of Jada. Huh? So here, let's switch to Jada and Chuck, I believe. Now that we have Chuck, I can put Jada in the infirmary. I've never, like I said, I've never in in how many hundreds of hours of State of Decay, I've never used that option. I would always just cure cure the infection with one to three plague samples and as you can see or in a moment okay so we're gonna go there so as you can see jada is now in the infirmary and what that does i guess is that it takes away one from the actual labor count which isn't too bad right now we don't really need labor for anything Okay, so we're going to loot this place. This guy has about 
plague infection. We're going to have to make some noise. Turn on our flashlight. And that's the other thing. I want a brighter flashlight for State of Decay 3. I want a, an enormous horde where zombies will funnel through or, or come, come from. Not just popping out of nowhere. Like, they can still be on the map. But once you kill them, I don't want new zombies spawning just poof because you made noise just in your periphery out, outside of view. I want them to, to, to come from that enormous horde and, and, and come from that direction, make their way. That, of course, would cost a lot of resources in terms of like having so many things on the screen. How that would work, I'm not too sure, but say, I believe State of Decay 3 is probably two years in from now, especially with COVID. I don't think it's we would be dreaming, you know, a beautiful dream to have State of Decay 3 next fall. I don't think that 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 that's even possible. So we're talking two years from now. So maybe in two years, our systems will have the, the capacity to have so many creatures. Who knows? Uh, I, f I forgot what other thing I was going to talk about, but... Oh, flashlights. I hope flashlights uh, maybe are varied, and maybe you can hold it in your hand. That'd be cool if you have a one-hand item. Flashlights on guns, and there's that rucksack that I needed. And brighter flashlights. Oh, man, I, I need brighter flashlights. Does it make sense? And um, let me know in the comments below whether you think it makes sense to have um, whether zombies are sensitive to light, whether they can detect light or they can't. Because to me, it doesn't make sense when you're playing State of Decay 2 you're behind a zombie and you have the flashlight on them. Can't they tell maybe there's a, like like a little bit of heat coming from them? Or or that there's light so it's changing so they don't are, are they not using their eyes at all? Okay. So I think what I want to do is after I loot this place, I want to turn maybe the neighboring business into a outpost so I can do a lot of looting and that was probably a mistake because now there's probably zombies behind us on the other side of that door yeah let's go help him because the more damage he takes the more damage I'm gonna like eventually I'm gonna have to play with that character get more plague infection Okay, let's do some more looting. Make some more noise. Okay, looks like we got a facility mod there. Forget what that propane tank does. There we go. Let's grab that. Let's switch back. Okay. And just checking to see, since we made noise, whether there's any Zeds around. Thankfully, no Zeds. Really, I'm just afraid of the ferals. And I'm afraid that I'm going to come across like double ferals, triple ferals at this stage of the game. I, I don't know what to expect. Might be a safe spot so let's just here. scout this business and turn it into a outpost now. Okay, work's done and this outpost is ready for use. And I wasn't even paying attention, but this will give me some meds every day, which is which will be greatly appreciated. Okay, so let's loot quickly now. Or, yeah. Got stuck there. Okay. The great thing about looting in an outpost, ooh, look what we got. We got something new. We got the Western short sleeve. So let's take this precious time to change, to change the look of our character. Let's scroll down. Alphabetized Western short sleeve. Black. 
Okay, not too impressive. Let's give us a cowboy hat. There we go. It looks so handsome now. Ooh, another rucksack. Okay, and we got a pill dispenser, which is fantastic. Drop it off. Okay, so let's see, infirmary, how's our girl doing? She lost maybe 10-15% of her infection, which is good. I'll need to use her eventually. Let's make some noise. Everything seems calm here. I honestly don't know what I'm going to do at this point, because two of my characters have 50% of their stamina. They're going to get injured more between, between the next time I can actually get some first aid kits. So, I don't know how they're going to operate on, like, no stamina. <laughs> they'll swing once, and then they'll be tired. So let's just take a look at this guy. This guy actually eats less, which is fantastic. Let's, and, and let's look at the stats. No special stats on her. And him, he actually is going to annoy people. Those are the people I never have in any of my communities. Anyone that, that's irritable or makes other people mad at them, I, I don't like that. And they'll be the first to go, or in this case, the first to die. <laughs> okay, we got a mixer that'll... I believe that speeds up any crafting in the kitchen. The problem is, I believe you need power to be able to do that. So let's loot this place, and we might head back to our base, hopefully without any incident. Okay, so let's head back. Actually, let's drop that off first. So let's head back and drop off our rucksacks. So, from that list I gave at the very beginning, you've noticed that we're taking more damage. We are getting more injuries. And there are the special plague freaks, which adds a whole new layer of difficulty. And as you can see, there's a bloater, and we pass by a streamer. And that only gave me two influence. Two influence. That's so low. Okay. Knock on wood, I feel like the zombies are not attracted to noise as much as I thought they would be. But you never know. Once again, this is only day one. So we're almost there. So I'm going to probably stop the video right here. Thanks so much for joining me today. Once again, leave your Xbox gamer tag in the comments below. Uh, I'd love to add you to my friends list and uh, we can play some multiplayer. I want to play some four player Lethal Zone because this is tough and uh, I, I don't like this <laughs> playing solo. So uh, check out the rest of my channel for other videos on State of Decay 2, video games, board games, and other fun things. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.